Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. A lot to talk about today, Battle Bond has finally been released, and with that, there's a lot of excitement around a number of Commander cards. We'll be talking about those throughout the video today. Also, we're seeing some ripple effects still from Pro Tour Dominaria last weekend in the standard scene. Now, in this video, we're not going to talk about Battle Bond pricing because we did a special video yesterday focusing on that, and I will link it at the end of this one in case you missed it. Now, quickly before we get started, though, just a really fast reminder, if you're looking for a way to support what we do here at the channel, just check out the description below. Our Patreon page is linked down there. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon. If you make any purchases on Amazon, it really can be anything. Once you go through that link, we'll get a small percentage for the channel. Finally, Flipside Gaming still offering a promo code for our viewers. They still have some of those exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats available if you're a fan of the old school legend art. And as always, thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers. You all make the channel successful. And let's get into the information. We're going to begin with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Four of the five cards, no surprise, are from Dominaria as more packs are getting open now. Number five, Mox Amber, down $1.14 to $13.99. This card just really hasn't found a home. I think eventually it will at some point, but it might be much later down the road. There were some modern, aggressive decks trying to run this. That kind of fizzled out. There is a Paradoxical Outcome deck that you'll find sometimes on Magic Online, but again, it's not putting up any major results currently. So because of that, this card will continue to slide. Number four, Settle the Wreckage, down $1.42 to $11.96. So this card and the next two we're going to look at were definitely impacted by the fact that the white-black vehicles deck did not put up a big result this weekend. So it did not have much of a presence, as a matter of fact, in the tournament, and that may have surprised some people. So you are seeing some pretty heavy losses from key cards that are part of that deck list. Now, aside from that, this is also in one of the Challenger decks, and those extra copies, they're not going to help the value of the card much either. That could be part of it, too. And aside from that, though, do remember, this card is seeing standard play a lot of times in the Azorius Control decks, which looked pretty good on day two of the Pro Tour, as a matter of fact. But even so, not enough to hold the value of this card up right now. Number three, History of Benalia, down $1.77 to $18. A couple of reasons for this. First off, it is a Dominaria card, so there's more in circulation, which is definitely bringing a lot of these prices down, especially on these high price Mythics. So that's a good thing for people trying to pick up the cards. But also, it goes back to the Pro Tour, a lot of the control decks running less and less, in fact, many control decks not running any copies of this anymore, as they fall more on a Teferi win condition at this point, as opposed to any creatures. The white-black vehicle deck not having a great performance added all up, and this card, I think, will continue to slide. Number two, Lyra Dawnbringer, down 348 to 1799. Basically, everything I just said about History of Benalia, just replace it with Lyra Dawnbringer, and it's pretty much the same evaluation. The card is not seeing play in the control decks as much anymore, and the White Black Vehicles deck didn't really do anything this weekend, so this card has been taking a pretty rough slide recently. Number one, Karn Scion of Urza, down 506 to $55. This one surprised me a little bit. Now, I think what you have to consider is the Pro Tour was a week later than normal. They were trying to avoid the Memorial Day weekend. And this card was no surprise to anybody. Like, everyone knew this was going to be a good card. They weren't waiting, necessarily, for the Pro Tour to pick it up. Because of that, we didn't see an increase on Pro Tour weekend. We actually saw a decrease because more packs were being opened, and the people that wanted this card kind of already had it, at least the early investors. So, with all that being said, I feel as if this was maybe a little surprising. But, when you think about it, I guess it does kind of make sense that this card is going down. Now, is it seeing play? Absolutely. It's all over the place. We saw tons of it during the Pro Tour. It looked great. It was in the top eight, so on and so forth. But aside from that, we've said in the past that seeing Modern play in some Affinity builds, it's seeing Legacy play in things like Steel Stompy, Eldrazi Stompy, and Mono Red Prison. So the card is getting out there. It's doing a great job. But $55 for a set that's being opened, the quantities that this is being opened in, is going to be a little unstable. I do think this declines more, maybe not at the same rate it declined this week, but I do think you see a slow decline. Eventually, this card will get closer to the $50 mark sooner than later. All right, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Number five, Ether Flux Reservoir, up 27 cents to $1.94. 
Not a huge increase here, but Strictly Better MTG did a really cool brew featuring this card with three copies in the main, and I do think it brought some spotlight to it this week. Number four, Liliana Death's Majesty, up 63 cents to $13. We talked about this card a lot last week. Day one of the Pro Tour, it saw some play on camera, and I think it made people realize that this card is actually undervalued. It has been undervalued for a while. It was sitting around like the six, eight dollar mark for a long time, and yet it was seeing play in standard decks, sometimes mono black decks, but more often it was things like mid range or control decks running either Demir colors or Crixus colors. So that continued during the Pro Tour, and a lot of people noticed, and I don't feel like the card's undervalued anymore. This is probably more of a fair price for the card. I do think you'll see some snapback in the coming weeks, but does it go below $10 again? Probably not for a while. Number three, Galta Primal Hunger, up 63 cents to seven eighty-five. Of course, this is part of those green stoppy decks we've been seeing in Standard, and many of them have been successful, even though they didn't crack the top eight of the Pro Tour this time around. But there is more than just that at play right now. Commander players are gravitating towards this card more and more. We're seeing some aggressive green builds in the world of Commander, and that is also moving this price a little bit. Number two, Goblin Chain Whirler, up 90 cents to 743. Maybe the card that had the biggest weekend at the Pro Tour. And even though it's a rare, it's not a mythic, so there's more copies in circulation, we see a 90 cent increase between right now and last Saturday, and that's actually pretty impressive. So this is obviously due to the fact that we saw this card in multiple top eight decks. It was all over the Pro Tour. And this is the real deal. Definitely another card that is strong in red this season. Now, part of the reason this card is so good is because of the support it has around it. So once rotation happens this fall, this card might cool off a little bit. It just depends on what happens with the next two sets, if it gets more tools or not to work with. But if it doesn't for some reason and we start losing some of the other cards that were already in the format, yeah, this card might calm down also, too. A lot of packs are being opened again, so I wouldn't expect this to go up next week. This will start going down, even though it is seeing a lot of play. Number one, one of the cards that also will not be leaving us in the fall, Rekindling Phoenix, up 201 to 29.97. Now, if you watched the Pro Tour last week, and you know that this and Goblin Chain Whirler had a huge presence, especially in the top eight. Red, black, aggro decks, and mono red and aggro decks were the decks to beat last weekend and put up some huge results. Outside of those colors, the only deck that made it in the top eight was an Esper Control deck, so there you go. And with that, and with many copies of this being played last weekend, it has a pretty nice week. All right, so let's move on to the world of modern. Let's look at the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Number five is Thrumming Stone, down 282 to $30.19. Now, this is not moving because of Modern. This is a card that's Modern Legal, but this is moving because of Commander, and it's finally snapping back a little bit. This card got super hot initially because Rat Colony was introduced in Dominaria, and then recently the Command Zone, as well as some other podcasters and such, have been talking about this card in relationship not only with Rat Colony, but Shadowborn Apostle. So this has had a really spiky month, and finally, we're seeing a little snapback. Number four, doubling season. Two copies here, Ravnica, City of Guilds, down 278 to 5805, with Modern Masters, down 319 to $55. Of course, this has been reprinted as a Mythic and Battle Bond, so the older copies are a little soft right now. They're going to continue to lose a little more value. I do think these settle in closer to maybe the $45 mark sooner or later, between $45 and $48. Whereas the new version right now, you can pick up around $30, and it's actually not a bad price. Although I would wait another couple weeks as more Battle Bomb packs get open. But this is another card that is here not because of what it does in Modern, but because of what it does in Commander. Number three, Trinisphere, down $354 to $30.41. Back when Bloodbraid Elf was unbanned, there were some people thinking that maybe this would be good sideboard tech against that, and this card spiked pretty aggressively. Since then, though, it kind of sat up there and hasn't come down until now, which is a little unusual. It definitely felt like it was overdue for some snapback and some normalization. It's finally happening. Now, during that whole time, I did see more and more of the land destruction decks in Modern running copies of this, and it's actually pretty good there, and that's not changing, I don't think. Aside from that, remember that this is a good Vintage and Legacy card, so it's not going to completely collapse, but I do feel like this should be closer to maybe $20, $25, and I think it's heading in that direction now. Number two, Dark Confidant from Ravnica, down 418 to $80.74. So the original goes down a little bit, 
This is normal stabilization though, trying to be a little closer to the price points of the reprints from the Modern Master sets. However, this will not go down and meet those because this is the original version. It's got unique art, of course, with Bob on it. So this one is going to always be higher than those, but the others have lost so much value recently. This was a little bit overdue to come down at least a tad bit. Now Jund was soft for a while, although it put up a pretty nice result a couple weeks ago. So that did stabilize a lot of these cards, including this one. And I do think if Jung can continue to put up some good results, this will stabilize, maybe even start to go back up again. So it's just all hinging on the success of that deck right now. Number one, Mox Opal from Scars of Meriden, down $6.26 to $100.15. Finally, this card normalizes a little bit and comes down. It's been so hot recently, it's been spiking aggressively. Every week we talk about this card, I've said week in and week out, it really needs a reprint. It is in so many key decks in Modern right now. I mean, Lantern Control, Affinity, Ironworks Combo, not to mention the play that it sees in Legacy as well as Vintage. So maybe it will come down a little bit more, but I don't know. I do think it's going to stabilize pretty quick and probably start climbing again unless something changes. All right, let's move on to the top five Modern Legal cards that have gained value this week. Now, much like we saw on the previous list, a lot of these cards are modern legal cards, but they're moving right now because of Commander. The reason for that is Commander is just really hot because, of course, Battle Bond just was released. Not to mention we're creeping closer to the August Commander decks coming out. And Modern is a little bit slower right now. It had its moment a few months ago where it got super hot, a little too turbulent, actually. And now that the meta is being figured out after the unbannings and such, things are just calming down there. Number five, Scalding Tarn. This is the Modern Masters 2017 version, up $1.41 to eighty-one seventeen. So this comes in fifth this week, and yes, this is a card that sees play in multiple formats, not just Modern, but I think part of the reason it is getting a push is because a lot of Modern players are looking a little harder now at Jeskai Control, especially since Teferi has made that deck perhaps a little bit better, in many cases, elbowing Jace out, believe it or not. Number four, Sword of Fire and Ice. This is the original Dark Steel version, up $1.52 to $51.23. So this is a little random. Why is this on here? Well, this is because of Battle Bond, and again, it's moving because of Commander more so than the other places it sees play. It does see some Legacy play or even some Vintage play occasionally, but really, the reason people are picking this up is because of two of the pairs that came out this past weekend, and that's Will and Rowan Kenrith. People are a little worried about those two as well as Zender Split, Eye of Wisdom, and Akuna, Eye of Chaos. We're going to reference these later again in the video. But so many players are gravitating towards is it builds with these pairs as their commander, perhaps? Folks are thinking they might need to prepare defensively, and that's what's going on right now with Sword of Fire and Ice. Number three, Stitch in Time, up 225 to 799. Another card that's moving because of commander, and actually moving because of the cards we just saw on the screen a moment ago. A lot of these flip a coin cards have become very hot ever since Cinder Split and Akon have been revealed. This one was on our list last week and is still, still hot, still hanging on. A lot of the other ones stabilized since then. Number two, Snapcaster Mage from Innistrad. Up 225 to 69, 69. This one, of course, moving mostly because of Modern. And in this case, again, it is that Jeskai Control deck. Number one, Nature's Will. Another hot commander card up 336 to 1198. Earlier in the video, I mentioned many Commander players are trying Galta out. Well, this card is working out well in those type of decks. Not to mention this card fits into some of those Saffirling and Fungi builds that became popular thanks to Dominaria as well. So this card has a huge week. All right, let's move on to our Vintage Spotlight. And last week, we saw some of the buyouts and exaggerated listings started to calm down a little bit. Now, this week, I'd say they went up slightly, but it's still a lot calmer than it was and we're going to do what we've been doing over the previous weeks. I'm going to show you a card. I'm going to show you what MTG Goldfish said happened to the card this week. And then I'm going to go onto eBay and give you the average eBay sales for the week. To save you some time, if you're a regular viewer, I'm not going to waste the time by telling you exactly how I get all the eBay data again. But I do have it in the description below in case you have any questions. Just check it out there. Let's get into it. We're going to begin with Aladdin's Lap from Arabian Nights of $15.97 to $35.49. This card is not on the reserve list. It has been reprinted. This is the original version, of course, though, and Black Border it looks super sweet, and it has that unique 5-5 casting cost. So, yeah, there are people that are going to gravitate towards this version of the card. Is it really up to $35.49? Well, what's eBay tell us? 
eBay sales this week were about $25 in one set on average. So you know what? That's actually pretty close. I mean, it's off by about $10, but this card has grown a lot recently. Next, we have Fungusaur from Unlimited. So we'll see a few Unlimited cards again like we have been seeing over the previous weeks, although the Unlimited buyout does seem to be cooling off. This one, though, goes up $16.76 this week to $24.50. Is that for real? Well, eBay says average price is $14.31 this week. So, yeah, again, off by $10, but not necessarily really, really far off. This is another card that has been increasing. Royal Assassin from Revised of $39.89 to $41.71. Wow, huge percentage increase for this Revised card this week. Is this for real? $4.49 on eBay. So that's actually a big difference. And I took a look at the listings to try to figure out what was going on with this card. It didn't look like it was malicious market manipulation. It looked like there were some high-grade cards that recently went up for sale, maybe all at the same time. They were by different stores, though, and they were charging between $40 and $50. Maybe one store or two stores put up a high price and a couple followed suit is what it looked like. So I wouldn't spend $40, $50 for a high-grade copy of this card. Check out your big marketplaces like eBay or Amazon. As a matter of fact, high-grade cards on eBay were selling for about $10, $15 this week. So if you're looking for a high-grade card, check those places or check your LGS. You're always going to find better deals there probably 99% of the time if you just stay off the online market, honestly. Two-headed giant of four eyes, up 67, 67 to 116, 13. This is actually the first reserve list card so far on our list, and this is the unlimited version. So, pretty big increase according to MTG Goldfish. Is this for real? On eBay, $39.99. So this one is way off as well. However, this card again has been growing a little bit recently, even if it's not pushed as much as the Crystal Commerce system makes it look like it's pushed. Firestorm. This is another reserve list card, this time from Weatherlight. Up 71.23 this week to 89.99. Wow. Now, this card does see a little bit of play in Legacy sometimes in dredge builds. Not all builds, but you'll see it there occasionally. $16.46 on eBay. So here's another one that is way off if you compare the price people are willing to pay for it compared to the listings that are out there. Birds of Paradise from Unlimited, up $195.36 this week to $273.97, according to MTG Goldfish. That's a pretty big increase. Now, this is an awesome card. It's fantastic in 93.94 format. It's great in many formats, as a matter of fact. So is this for real? $129.57. Okay, not quite as high as the price we just saw, but this is another card that has been increasing over a number of months now. Settling in around $130 still feels pretty strong to me. Remember, this is not a reserve list card either. You can get much cheaper copies if you go for other sets. Okay, we're going to wrap up the Vintage Spotlight with two different copies of Underground Sea, beginning with the revised one. This time, it's up $224.81 to $865, according to MTG Goldfish. Wow. I'm going to tell you right now, I looked this up on eBay. There are tons of these things moving right now, especially that revised version. It's not as rare as maybe you would think, definitely, because my average price was an average of over 50 transactions. And that doesn't count all the transactions I threw away because they were either like slabbed or signed or damaged or heavily played, so on and so forth. So what did I come out with? $546.12. Okay, not quite like over $800, but still really, really strong considering this is a revised card, not an unlimited card. So how is that unlimited version doing? Up 250 this week to $1,350. Now I'm going to tell you far less transactions. As a matter of fact, I only found two transactions on this one. They averaged to $700. Now, two transactions, not a lot of data points. So perhaps this could be a little undervalued or off a little bit. So maybe if you want to be generous, move this up closer to $800, $900. It's actually not all that far off percentage-wise from what Goldfish is telling us. Definitely close before the spike this week. Okay, I know I've been talking a lot about Commander in this video, but I got three more cards I want to spotlight. The first is Thelon of Havenwood. This is up $1.33 to $3.12. And I mentioned earlier, of course, Sapperling and Fungi decks are pretty popular right now, and this fits right into those. Next is Mizix of the Ismagnus, and this is up 602 to 802 this week. Of course, this is from Commander 2015, has not been reprinted yet. Now, the reason this is moving so much is, again, because of Battlebound. Earlier, we saw Will and Rowan. 
yeah, they're directly responsible for this one. And finally, we're going to close things out with some saprolings with saprolings symbiosis of $904 to $21.70. Pretty big percentage increase for this card this week. Again, falling right into some of those commander decks. All right, well, that's our market watch for this week. And I do believe we have entered the summer of commander between the excitement around Battle Bond, and then later in the summer, we'll be getting the commander decks. I feel like we might be seeing a lot of cards out of nowhere start to spike as people find different uses for them in various commander builds. So stay close to the market. There might be some surprises coming up. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.